All right, so uh, next up, actually, we're going to be continuing in on this theme with a presentation from Anna Herzberger, also from Michigan State University. And they will be speaking on unexpected environmental spillover effects of the soybean trade. So you may already get tired of me, but I guess I have to do this. My student, Anna, had a baby, so she cannot do it. So this is um, a uh, study, actually, uh, Nick had laid excellent foundation for this uh, study, uh, his talk. Um, so this is uh, uh, also related to soybean, but they work on different types of uh, effects. And uh, as we all know, this global food production has doubled in the last three decades. Uh, but the global food export has increased a order of magnitude. That means the export is much faster than the food production. So that just illustrated the huge importance of the uh, export issues. And many studies have uh, evaluated the social economic and the environment impact of trade on exporting countries and importing countries. But little has, uh, is known about spillover effects on non-trading countries. And uh, I'm going to give you a work here. Is, as Nick mentioned, China is the last, uh, largest importer of soybean. Uh, in the world, imported soybean from US, Brazil, and uh, some small amount from Argentina, and even small amount from Canada. And, but the US and Brazil are dominating. So this is a question I want you to think about. It. How does the soybean trade between Brazil, US, and China cause air pollution in Russia? Think about this issue. And um, so this is our hypothesis, what we call the meta coupled cascading effect. We have a series of hypotheses, just like Nick did a series of hypotheses dealing with uh, the drought impact on biodiversity in Brazil. We have a series of hypotheses address how trade between Brazil and China would have impact in the US have impact on air pollution in Russia. So Russia is not involved in the trade uh, business here. Um, so here is the starting point and the trade soybean flow from US and, and Brazil mainly to China, right? And then the next hypothesis is that, and this uh, uh, imports, cause crop conversion from soybean to maize or corn because the domestic uh, soybean price in China is much higher than the international soybean price. So farmers in China cannot compete with the soybean farmers in Brazil or in US. So they had to uh, make profit by converting soybean production to corn production. So, um, so then once they convert you know, the um, soybean from corn, and the, our focus here is in the uh, Henunjian province, in the northeast part of China, next to Russia. So Henanjiang province is a major soybean production area in China. And um, uh, actually soybean was domesticated in China 3,000 years ago. Until a few decades ago, China was still the largest exporter of soybean. But now China consumes 80% of the international market of soybean. So you can see the big difference. So, but the Henunjiang province still produce a lot of soybean compared to, but compared to uh, earlier years, then um, it's much smaller, right? And when they convert 
soybean production to corn production, and they also change some agricultural practices. And because corn or maize has large amount of stems or stale, and then to uh, prepare for next year's production, they burn this residue, right? The corn, the soybean has a very small amount of uh, residue. You can just they, um, put in the soil, then they can reuse it next year. Right? So they have to burn that. So when with this uh, burning, they produce pollution. And this produce, uh, uh, production of air pollutant and uh, will move to Russia, the neighboring province in Russia. Right? This is the area we are interested in here. And there are several provinces uh, in Russia next to Penrinjan province. Right? So this is the area where and the air pollutant will uh, cross the international border. Actually, it cost um, international uh, uh, problems between Russia and uh, China. And the Russia government made the official protest of China's air pollution problem. Right? So this is the hypothesis we proposed. So the objective of this study is to test this series of hypotheses. So we use a set of methods and the statistics the trade started from the United Nations FAO, um, uh, the Food and the Agriculture Organization. And we also did household service to, uh, with the farmers. And actually, this addressed the issue that the, uh, one of the uh, uh, questions were asked about the, uh, of Nick, and how we trying to understand how farmers respond to this kind of issue, to the trade issue, what they concern, what the agricultural practices are, whether they burn the uh, uh, crop residue or not, how often they burn, how much they burn, and so on and so forth. And whether the trade um, of soybean affect their land use decisions. So there are a lot of social economic uh, uh, issues involved. And uh, for the Brazil project, and we had a a, some uh, social economic survey, but not as extensive as in China. So this is uh, the uh, uh, household survey. And then we also trying to understand the land use, land cover change, and to map the spatial and temporal dynamics of maize and soybean fields between 2006 and 2016 in Henan Powers use modest data. And then we also try to understand the file dynamics, the file uh, from the burning of crop residue. And we also uh, use the same time period of data of models, and but the, uh, eight, the summary file product. And then we also had observation for uh, air pollution and using the modest aerosol product. And uh, furthermore, we model air pollution, like how uh, air pollution in Henan province and in the neighboring province of Russia, right, use this uh, um, uh, transport and di uh, di dispatcher model. And here are some the results. And as you can see here, this is just an example. The soybean export from Brazil to China has grown exponentially in the, in the, uh, uh, over the 20 uh, years uh, from 1997 to 2017. Then we can see here the dynamics of uh, uh, maize. So uh, maize is the uh, uh, green color and the soybean is the dark green color, and then this is a mixed soybean and maize together. And then you can see this is from the uh, map in 2006, and this is a 16. You can see more and more maize, right? You compare this two years. But if you compare over time, actually the soybean 
has been declining right, over time, and the, the maize has increased over time, and then the rest is a mixed area. So um, this is what we saw in the field. You see a lot of those uh, uh, corn or maize stems or stuff left on the, in the field. Okay. And then the burner, this, right? So that you cause air pollution and smoke and fire. Right? And this is a map show the dynamics of active fire due to crop residue burning in Heilongjiang province. And here, 2006, and this is 2016. So this, you can see the many more fires you know, uh, in 2016. This is corresponding to more soybean imports from Brazil and other countries to China. And also, you see more corn or maize in 2016 than 2006. So this is correlated with that. And then you see this is the dynamics. The area exposed to the active fires. You can see this is increased over time as well. And then this is a, um, uh, a pollu air pollution. You can see here in, uh, this is the aerosol optical uh, sickness. It's a, a uh, proxy or surrogate of air pollution. Okay. Uh, the fine particle uh, mass, PM 2.5. Right. You can see this is a month in the annual basis. Uh, this is the month, uh, February, uh, January, February, and then you can see the seasonal changes. And then the red line means the uh, 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 area in China. The, green, uh, the blue line is the area in Russia. You can see they are more or less correlated. And then this is the, on the annual basis, you can see that they also have similar trend. That means the more air pollution in China than the more air pollution in Russia. And this is a, uh, 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 a figure show that the number of days with daily PM 2.5 from crop residue burning in Heilongjiang province, greater than five microgram per square meter, and according to the WHO standard right, during this year. And then finally, I just want to uh, briefly conclude, and uh, air pollution in Heilongjiang has significantly increased over time due to the rise in crop residue burning on to the switch from soybean to maize in response to international trade. And then this impact influence not only Henan province, but also cross international border through meta cascading effects and generate uh, spell effects. And this is just their suggestion to reduce the residue burning can also help climate change mitigation. So, uh, Finally, thanks to the many people who helped this project and NSF for funding. So thank you so much.